Hello everyone, welcome to video 5 of chapter 5. So in this video, we'll go through the proof for the claim star. There are four parts of it, okay? You might wish to review the four claims that we have made. And now we'll go through a detailed proof for the general case. Okay, so with the same notation as the previous um, video with the A and A star, all that defined, we'll go through the proof. The first part, part A, so we now rearrange the columns of A such that the J1, Jm, those are the um, index for the basic solution in the final tableau. Okay? We rearrange such that these ones become the first M columns. So what does that mean is that after this rearranging, then we can rewrite the A, the coefficient um, matrix of the initial tableau into two parts. And, uh, and here the first part is M times M square matrix. And this D denotes whatever is remaining. Okay, and we just put a vertical line in between to show that these two matrices are placed side by side to form a bigger A matrix. Okay, so now we um, rearrange the C vector in the same way, such that uh, we call this arranged one C bar. It contains a vector of length M, a row vector, and the remaining part. So that's CB and that's CR. And then we arrange the X vector in the same way, although now it's a column vector, but we rearrange the index in the same way. This is a uh, length M, that's XB, and that's the remaining XR. Okay, so with the index arranged in this way, then after pivoting, we would have the rearranged A star would consist of on the left, an identity matrix I, which is M times M identity, and then the remaining part, a D matrix, and then the C vector um, will have um, all zero under the basic variables, and then the remaining part, the non-basic one, CR star. Okay, so with the bar um, on the top, that means it's the index rearranged. Okay, so... The notation just gets a bit heavy now, so keep those in mind. Okay, now let's take a look at the pivot steps. So what did the pivot steps do is uh, take a form like this, A bar, C bar, the rearranged one, which is BD and the CBCR is this form. And the pivot step changed this into this new form the final form, which uh, we call it A bar star, B star with all stars. And uh, that means the A bar star has the identity part here and has the part zero here. And the remaining is denoted as we um, defined earlier. Okay. Then the transformation from this one into that one, the initial tableau to the final tableau, can be interpreted as a multiplication of a matrix because these are all linear operations pivoting is a linear operation so this means that there exists some matrix we call it m is a square matrix m times m such that if i multiply this one the initial part by this m on the left it will give me this part, the final part. Okay, so what does it mean is that this A bar star can be interpreted as M times this A matrix. Just multiply by M, you will get the star part. So what does that mean? Okay, let's take a closer look. So the A bar star we know is identity and some matrix D, and that shall equal to M times A. A is the matrix 
consisting of B and D, which I wrote here. And then I can multiply this M into each of this. So I would have MB, which is a square matrix, and M times D, which is non-square. Okay, so if we want this matrix to equal to that matrix, then each part must match each other. So this means I here must match that square matrix part, which is MB, and the D star here should match MD, which gives us this one. Okay, so I have two equations. So we can easily see that if M times B is an identity matrix, then they are inverse of each other. So in particular, we actually find this M, M matrix that we say that exists. It's exactly the inverse of B. And then if the M is the inverse of B, and we can plug it in, and then I have D star is B inverse times D. Okay, so more relations are being discovered. Okay, so let's plug this back in. So then A bar star is M times A bar. And then we can put in the expression for M, which is B inverse times A bar. And now we can um, rearrange the index back into the original one. And then it still holds that that A star is still this matrix times A, and which is B inverse times A. And this is exactly the claim number one. And then the same thing happens to the constant term B star here will be just multiplied by the same matrix M, which is B inverse B, and that is part two. Okay. So we have proved claim one and two. Okay, so now let's take a look at um, the system of constraint after pivot. So the coefficient matrix A is now identity and some matrix D star times X B X R. That's our notation for the vector that equals B star. Then we can work it out work out this multiplication, we'll get identity times xb plus d star times xr equal b star. And then um, identity times xb is just xb, which we keep on the left-hand side, and then we move this to the right-hand side to get this expression. And then um, the objective function, so the coefficient of the objective function is now CB, CR, and uh, multiplied by the X shall equal to um, Z0 plus Z. And then let's work it out. And this product here becomes CBXB plus CRXR, and that equals Z0 plus Z. Okay, and now we um, plug in the expression of xb, which we obtained here in the first line. And then we have z0 plus z would equal to this expression. We write it here, and then where we have xb, we put it in this term. Okay? And then we can distribute the multiplication to have cb b star minus apply here cb d star xr and the remaining part now we are going to combine these two terms together and take out xr and, and that gives me xr times cr minus cbd which i put here and then this equal to by moving this one to the left hand side, then I'll have Z0 minus this term plus Z. Okay, This is just what I rearrange. And then we see that this will be the objective function 
at the end after pivoting and then you know this term would actually be the z naught star so we can write this as z naught star plus z and the z naught star exactly equals that and then we notice that this part in red is exactly claim number three and we've just proved it okay so um one more thing to prove let's start from this this was the the relation we had on the previous page okay starting from here let's consider the left hand side this expression here and we're going to rewrite it so the left hand side and we know we can um, write it as the follows so we keep this term and we add a zero term we add zero times x b because here it only contains x r and the whole x vector is x b and x r so we add that in and then we can rewrite this sum as the product of this column vector and on this row vector add all uh, m zeros and this part and then we put the x b and x r here okay and then we know we can we can this is just the x vector and then we can write it as a column vector times the x vector we denote the column vector by c bar star and then c bar star equal just here that's what we just call it now we claim that c bar star equals c bar minus c b b inverse a that is exactly claim number four okay to show that indeed we just need to carry out some computation so let's start from here and the goal is to start from here and to show that it in the end gets this expression okay so c bar minus cvb inverse a what does that equal to well let's write out and c bar can be written as two parts cb and the second part cr it's a long row vector and then we'll have cbb inverse times a bar and then let's write out a bar has b as a square part on the left and then d the remaining part and now um, let's distribute this product into each part so i still have c bar here and then i have this matrix times b that will be a square matrix and then this matrix times d and then square matrix here okay now i see that b inverse times b gives identity identity times anything is that anything so i remove that i will just get cb and i get this term which i copy okay now i perform the subtraction of this vector minus this vector and cb minus cb so the first m element becomes zero and then the remaining element will be this vector minus this vector, which we write here. And now we see that um, B inverse times D is the D star. So what is here is exactly here and what we called C bar star. Okay, and then um, we have proved claim number four. So we complete the proof for all parts of the claim. Okay, finally, um, at this step, now we know that the optimal basic solution is uh, x bar star, which would be just uh, the b star on the right hand side for the basic variables and zero for the non-basic variables. And then you can put the order in back and we, we would call that one just the x star. Okay. okay, so um, that is the proof for that claim, and later on we'll be using this claim for sensitivity analysis that comes in the next video. So hope you enjoyed it. i see you next time.